The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Okay, we're working on mini pinball again. In the previous episode, we made the opto interrupter switches so we could see the ball moving around, and we also built a light into that. So we pretty much have all the separate parts we need to make this machine. So now it's time to make the enclosure to figure out how everything comes together. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In this episode, I'm going to be working on the enclosure and the mechanical design of the mini pinball. So a few months ago, we built this part, which was the flipper ball loading mechanism along with some buttons. And I've torn it up because I want to see how it interfaces with this. Now, this is a paper pattern that I've cut out at full size, which represents the shape that I'm going for with the new machine. So we can see its depth here and kind of its height. So I, I want to make sure that the button doesn't intersect with anything. And the main thing it would probably intersect with is this ball loading mech. So now with this, I can actually see. <laughs> so this is one of those cases where it's just faster to do something in foam core and physically put it together than it is to draw everything on the computer and figure out if things are intersecting. And then I double checked. So, well actually, um, this represents the bottom of the new board that we're gonna have. But I probably should check one more thing and that's the distance from the front to the front of this because the front of the actual wooden play field actually isn't going to be flush with the front of this. It's gonna be back a little bit. I'm gonna grab a measurement and double check. Yeah, that uh, that's, does not intersect with this at all. I mean, it's close, but no cigar. Cool. All right, well, that answers one question. So I know where I can put my flipper buttons. So the case will look like this. It's a little bigger than I wanted, but if you remember, we extended the length of the, of the pinball table itself to have better physics, basically to slow it down. So that's how everything will fit in relation to everything else. So we're probably gonna have to make the front of the case at a slight angle as well, because if the front of the case is straight and then this is straight, um, the plunger is going to kind of chop at the ball like that. So we need this uh, plunger rod to be at the same angle as the table relative to the bottom of the machine, which is 10 degrees in that direction. And then once I know that it works with the cheap stuff, I'll move on to the more expensive six millimeter plywood. All right, so what if we had this a little lower? Can you see that right there? So instead of having it at straight 10 degrees, you bring it down a little bit to basically reduce the overall profile and material usage of this thing. Uh, one concern that we might have is if it's going to hit the top of our display here. So let's try, okay, so that's 10 degrees, cool. All right, let's try 15, that's probably gonna be too far. Yeah, let's try 12. Eh, 12 could work. All right, so let's go down here. So if we do 12 degrees, we still have a good amount of space above the ball loader, so we could have like a little apron for rules, you know, or, you know, just basically hide the ball loader mech. Although the ball loader mech looks pretty cool. However, you don't want, you know, you wouldn't want your kid's fingers to get pinched in it or something. So probably should have that covered up. Uh, yeah, let's give this a shot and see what it looks like. So let's take this and I'm going to make a note that it's 12 degrees. That's not bad. So then we can take this here, bring it down. All right, so we can see where everything fits. We have a nice slope. And so we, since the slope is lower, we don't have to worry about this angle looking too severe. I think I'll uh, mock this up with some foam core and see how it physically looks. I'm gonna work on the front of it now, which has the shooter rod assembly. So this piece here represents the six millimeter wooden front of the case. The 3D printed part fits into that and it's screwed in from the back. So what I did here, since I'm still drawing this in two dimensions, is I took the front view version of how the shooter lane mount is oriented to the ball, which is right there. See? And I've copied that over into, into our side view, right? So I've rotated it 10 degrees to put it on the same angle as the rest of the play field. So now I can do like 
a trick. Now I can take it along with this thing here and make a copy. Watch this. Now I'm going to uh, unrotate at 10 degrees. That gives me the straight up and down version. I'm gonna move this out of the way. This just represents the play field right now. Take that, move it up here. Now we have to figure out the horizontal positioning of this. It might be a little less straightforward, but I think I can do it. Oh yeah, here we go. So this represents the front of the machine versus the play field. So I think that's enough information. So if we copy that, uh, yeah. Okay, so this down here, this represents the play field. So if I take the thing that I just copied and I line it up to the play field like that, then I bring it up here, then I can see how it relates to the rest of the case. This is the inside of the case here. And then these are the side panels that we're mocking up with foam core. So now we know how the center of the shooter rod relates to the side of the case. So now you're probably wondering, why do we still have this? Well, this represents the height of the front of the unit versus the shooter lane. So now if I drag this all the way over here like that, and then drag it in like this, now I can see where the shooter lane goes, even though I, it's like I lost one of my holes here. I guess I can just replicate that. Yeah, see that? Cool. So this piece here is what I will cut for the front of the unit. All right, so here we go. All right. Now, if you come up on top here, we'll have to have a cutout on the playfield where this shooter lane is, because otherwise you won't be able to lift up the playfield. The shooter lane will be in the way. But for now, we can just make sure that it's lined up correctly to the ball, which it appears to be. Good job, thing. You're really on the ball. All right, let's take a look at this. So this is gonna go right about here. So we want it you know, fairly high so we can see the text on the screen, but we're also gonna have to have some kind of barrier because we don't wanna hit the screen with the ball and break it. So there'll probably be something right about here. And I'm thinking um, to remove the play field, you can just lift it straight up like this and out. So the front of it, there'll be a front piece right here and that will hold the front of it in place because otherwise you'd have to go backwards and up to pull it out. And uh, again, you might bump into some of these some of these cables here. So I'm gonna design an enclosure to go in front of the screen as well. But uh, everything, you know, everything seems to basically fit. I think I'm gonna do a few more tasks with the foam core though before I actually cut the more expensive wood. Then we'll probably just have, uh, I think just like four, four main mounting holes in the back of this. One of them is under this uh, Arduino, although that may be changed now that we have the volume control. So we'll probably just have some uh, posts in the back here, like a nylon insulator posts, and then we'll go through here and then out the back with the screws. And that'll hold this in place, and then there'll be a cutout in the back so you can get at the switch and the power cord in the programmer. So we'll have like probably like a panel like right here in front of the electronics, and there'll just be a cutout for the window. And there'll be a cutout for the screen. Felix, what are your thoughts on this board? Um, I see I see the issue we're having there, and that makes me have a couple of thoughts. Yep. Um, one is we could change the board up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having this rectangular shape, Yeah. Uh, uh, right here, we could bring the board up like that. That would enable and put us... put the screen up? Yeah, that would enable us to bring the whole board oh, down. Oh, yeah, so if the screen goes... Yeah, so basically the screen stays put and everything else moves down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could work. Uh, another option. And that would give us more space for a proper tab up here. So yeah. we, we have some support, yeah. So yeah. Felix, if we have a, uh, a permanent horizontal bezel in front of the screen, this is about how much space you'd have to get at the plugs yeah. if everything's assembled. Yeah, I think this would be pretty decent. And we're looking at reworking the uh, PCB, so which will bring down these plugs uh, about half a half an inch. inch. Yeah, so everything would be half an inch closer. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, because right now it's and... it's accessible, so it'll be even more accessible after we mm -hmm. change the board. Yeah, and this big hole in the bottom is really great because then we can access everything underneath it, access all the uh, it's plugs. It's like a car. That's, that's really nice. Yeah, we could probably almost have like maybe some screw posts here. So once you want to affix the play field in place, it won't move because right now it would be like, Whoa! it would fall out backwards. Mm -hmm. So we're probably kind of to the point where it's like, all right, time to. Redesign the circuit board. Yeah, redesign, about, the, yeah. yeah, redesign the circuit board. Print it out. Draw that into our design, and then we can finalize. Well, at least prototype <laughs> the rear panel mm -hmm. and both of these bezels. So modifying the PCB so far hasn't been too complicated. Of course, I haven't fixed any of the traces, but I moved the LCD half an inch up. I left the Arduino where it was. I moved the TNC about 0.7 inches to the right. Then I moved the power switch and the power plug to the right, and then extended the circuit board to the right to accommodate them and the teensy. 
So before we had this, um, this is pretty much in a good spot where the Arduino is. See, we can use the side walls to cover up the Arduino's power input because we don't want the user to use that. But the power plug, the USB for the Teensy, and the power switch were way, way too deep. So I basically measured it off this to give me some actual world measurements. And then I came up with this drawing that I just described. Okay, now that I've got the PCB mostly figured out, at least physically, I was able to design the rest of the case and now we can assemble it. So I got our side panels here. So uh, full disclosure, these pieces were cut on two different lasers. <laughs> Let's see how they line up. So during the course of this project, the tube on my Epilog laser died. Thankfully, Karen is president of a hackerspace that is like two blocks away. Actually, no, literally, it's two blocks away. It's right over there. All right, so this is the rear bezel piece. I captured it here. Obviously, it'd probably stay in just like that, but just to be sure and to make this thing really sturdy, probably sturdier than it needs to be. Although, I don't know, kids, right? Kids can destroy anything. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right, so I'm gonna put in these pieces next. That will hold the playfield, and then we can see how the playfield fits in in relation to the bezel, and then we can finish up by putting it on the back along with the faux circuit board. Okay, so here's where the rubber hits the road. So we've got the back panel with our simulated circuit board, and I did that because I want to see if all the heights are correct on these components. Okay, power button's a little off. This hole is a little bit to the left. That one's pretty good. Power jack is good. So yeah, mostly got it. I'd probably wait until I get the actual real new circuit board and mount that just to be sure you know that it's correct but i think it's close enough for now now you can see how that fits back there and so there'll be bezel in front of that kind of like that of course it'll be thinner material and that plastic bezel will attach to the back panel and then as we discussed before you'll be able to go in here and get at all the plugs even while the board is installed so you can be like oop doop, that, that that play field goes in like this comes straight down it's the front, boom. The tabs are lined up, they should be, yep. So then once you have this bezel up here, see that way the ball can't get stuck up there. And we have a maximum height of one inch for one of these pieces. So our uh, physical bezel in the wood drops down onto the one inch piece. And then if there isn't a wall here, there's still a wall back there. So basically there's no way the ball can fall into the cabinet, which, be, which would be bad. That's pretty much it. That's the um, physical design of the mini pinball machine. That's all we have for today. Let's quickly recap what we did. So, we designed and cut this plywood enclosure for the mini pinball machine. It's all tabbed together with screws and nuts Keeps it pretty uh, tight and sturdy. Uh, we have it so the play field can lift up and you can pull it out that way, or there's a big hole in the bottom that you can access the parts through, and also that big hole saves wood to make it less expensive. Uh, we also did some reworking with the PCB. We moved a few things around so we could have the controls and the ports closer to the side of the unit, and also we raised the screen up very slightly. So in a future episode, we need to send off to get the new PCB revision made. Basically, the screen goes up a little bit, and then we can start being creative. So stay tuned for the future episode where we take all these parts and we make a sample game of it that could be included in a possible kit down the road. So what do you think about this project so far? Do you like our PCB? What about this wooden case? Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Shiny new era is tiptoeing nearer. Just listen to teacher. <laughs> You'll become a true believer, Dr. Jones. Tell me, doctor, where are we going this time? Do, 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 do. Oh, this whole planet is lava. This whole planet is snow. This whole planet is casino. <laughs> it should be like a San Francisco planet. It's like always like fall. Oh, what if there was like Indiana planet? Ugh, yeah, that'd sad. be the worst. Or Waffle House planet? Or vegan planet? Or Menards planet? <laughs> <laughs> Menards planet. We have everything. 
Elmstead's worst pinball machine in the world. <laughs> this game sucks. They really long ball times. You can't make any money off it. We have a special guest again today, Bob Badley. We've been playing with the Amazon Alexa lately. We kind of went nuts with it. Bob, I brought in something to test the UART. Okay. One of my favorite classic computers. Awesome. TRS-80 Model 100. Okay, I'm gonna go into my terminal program that I wrote in basic. 